Good morning. My name is Sam Yellowing, and as Miguel Kelly said, I'm here representing Snell Packaging and Safety from New Zealand. Snell is our family business, and we recently completed our profitability project, which was the building of a time during activity based costing model for our business in partnership with Miguel from Cost and Profitability. So, a little bit about us uh, we're a distributor of packaging and safety products. We are the largest privately owned business in the industry. It's a family business, which is 100% New Zealand owned and operated. Um, compared to some of the other examples, we might not be so big, but for us, uh, we have 120 staff. We have four distribution centres across New Zealand. We've just opened, opened an office in Australia, and we have an office in China for our imports. We have New Zealand $60 million annual turnover about, with 22,000 products from 150 suppliers and 5,000 customers. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, here we are in Europe. Miguel had to come all the way down to New Zealand. It was a journey for him, but it was well worth it. So I've just got a little quick introductory video. Uh, it's a little bit easier than me explaining the words and can give you a bit of a picture of what we're doing. It's a little bit cheesy. We give it to our customers sometimes, but I think it'll be good to give you an idea of what we do. Okay, so um, some of the products we, we sell, we do general industrial consumables, which is things like cardboard boxes, pallet wrapping, tapes. We also do safety products, uh, gloves, boots, hats, protective clothing, and a new industry we've recently moved in is the flexible packaging <coughs> industry, which is like printed pouches, uh, real stock films and trays. The guy you just saw in the video, uh, Pat Galloway, he's a chartered accountant by trade, and he's always had a great interest in understanding the financials of the business. This has been nothing new for the family and me. I can remember when I was young, my dad used to, I've always bore us to death saying, his favorite cliche, it's like us running down the road with a parachute behind our backs when talking about an unprofitable customer. It still drives me crazy when he says it. <laughs> Pat's always believed there's huge power in understanding profitability on a micro level, and has only with recently available software solutions and modern day ERP systems has this information become available to small medium enterprises like Snell. Ten years ago, our management team uh, decided to embark on a project to measure our customer profitability, but all the solutions in the market were kind of targeted towards the bigger businesses, the Fortune 500 companies. That didn't stop us trying though. So we hired a graduate called Jimmy and we told him what we wanted to do, that we need to calculate our cost to serve and understand our profitability. Jimmy was a statistician and he was a real geek. Um, he fulfilled every, even with broken glasses and the project was very unlikely to be successful. It was too big a challenge for Jimmy given his resources and tools and I think the only real positive that came out of it was that Jimmy was able to afford a new pair of glasses. <laughs> Fast forward to today, and our management team decided uh, to now need to look at the profitability project again. After a discussion Pat and I had about a management accounting paper I took while I was at university, Pat read an article on Robert Kaplan and Stephen Anderson's develop developments for time-driven activity-based costing, and how the methodology was becoming more accessible to small, medium businesses like Snell. After some investigation online, we learned about the methodology and its potential and we started looking at experts in the field who could help us with an implementation. We got in touch with Miguel, as he said, and he presented to us a, a solution based on Acorn Systems software, and we decided to get it down from New Zealand and give it the green light. Now, for Pat, seeing we were presented um, a lot of information about what this methodology could bring to us, but I think you've seen this already before this morning, the biggest one for us, and as a business owner, you can imagine your eyes lighting up when you see something like this, but also the realization of what this could mean for us and how much we were bleeding profits with inefficiencies. So I think this was, for us, the whale bone diagram was the real, uh, it's when the penny dropped for us and we started to realize the power of money's methodology. So we got together with Miguel, and like you said, a very short turnaround, it was only 14 days, I think. And uh, we decided to give it a green light and let's go for it because time is money and we are wasting time. So the challenge for us in August last year was to develop a TD agency model to capture the processes of Snell 
and to allocate the costs of doing business down to a transactional level, which is something we have never been able to do. This would give us complete transparency over every aspect of the business and give critical information on the possibility of our customers, products, suppliers, our branches, and our sales team, as well as the processes within our business. The solution was built on Acorn Systems Performance Analyzer 5G, we call it PA 5G. Here you can see the main interface of the tool. The layout provides a nice illustration of the cost flow of the model. Starting with the GL on the left, costs are assigned to resource pools in the business. From here, the costs flow down to processes attached to each resource pool, where it gathers in the business dimension for analysis on multiple levels. The software is very intuitive, and with an understanding of the methodology, it's very easy to get the hang of it. The tool also has input, Acorn's performance analyzer has input tools to check the cost flow. You can compare monthly totals with the relevant company P&L as well. And we also consulted with appropriate staff to check allocations, to check results and make sure that everything looked good. For us in the model, I think I wanted to talk a little, about, a little bit about five key challenge areas for us. Um, a lot of you have a good understanding of a basic TDABT model, so I think there's a bit of benefit for us in uh, talking a bit about the unique aspects of what was difficult for us in the practical implementation for a distribution company. I'll start with Fract, because this is the most important one for us, and it's been a pet hate for our management team for a long time. As a distribution business, one of the key aspects for us to manage was our freight bill, and freight recovery has admittedly been quite poor for us in the past. In a competitive industry such as ours, many of our competitors offer freight free as an extra when trying to win a contract, so it's become very widespread and almost a given in some circumstances. Once a customer gets used to freight free, it's very hard to turn that around and make a good freight recovery. Our main freight contractor for now bills us hourly, which means we have a good rate compared to other alternatives. But this means we only have a high level understanding of costs and freight revenue for each customer is easy to control. Where things started to get away from us was understanding the freight costs at the individual customer level. Calculating the hourly rate of a truck driver on a multiple delivery run and trying to allocate that cost to a single delivery became a lot more complicated. Correct. We, we decided to look for inspiration from someone who is an expert in the industry. So we actually looked at the courier companies to see what they did to tackle the issue. Courier companies use three fundamental variables uh, when they charge. The volume of the product, the weight, and the distance it must travel. In our case, we decided to use drivers for, for our freight costs as weight and product volume. Sorry, not weight and product volume, uh, distance and product volume. We determined weight to be of less significance for us because we've built hourly and we have omitted it for the sake of simplicity. Our freight volume calculation had two units of measure, a pallet and a pack, which consisted of 1.4 meters cubed and approximately 0.125 meters cubed. We, charged, we divided the total volume into these units and charged accordingly. The distance from our distribution center was also divided into zones and more costly as they get further away. Miguel and I built a lookup table in the PA 5G, which takes the data extracted from our dispatch team's clip view report. It looks at outgoing invoices, product volume to calculate the pallets and packs, and then the customer distance from our distribution center to determine the freight cost. The model attaches the freight cost to the invoice profitability. For the first time in our company, company's history, we can now examine the cost attached to delivering to each customer. The implications of such knowledge are very powerful for us, and we now use we can now quantify the cost of a freight-free contract during negotiations, and also run what ifs to investigate the cost savings of combining orders. These two drivers require high quality of data, and when we had 15,000 products to measure and 5,000 customers to deliver to, there was a huge effort to get it right. It is not until you put the data under the microscope and examine the results do you gain a, a real understanding of the importance of data quality. Admittedly, Miguel, we know we're not, we were not 100% accurate at the time of the model completion, and this became obvious when our results contained some errors. Fortunately, the methodology is solid, 
and shows the errors very quickly and they're very identifiable. Before I left New Zealand, we assigned staff to complete and clean the data capture of our product volume and distance while away. It is a process of constant improvement, but we're now pushing for 100% accuracy and I expect this to be completed near the end of June. The mantra of quality in and quality out rings very true for us and it's a lesson we learned very quickly. The next one is the corporate sustaining costs. These are the high level costs created within our TD ABC model as an allocation way of, as a way of allocating the high level costs which are essential for day to day business but are not necessarily traceable to a dry up. Something like the costs of senior management or having monthly board meetings. We wanted to allocate these costs in a way which fairly represents the customer's involvement with Snell, but finding a driver to represent this consumption proved a little bit difficult. We did run some test simulations, and initially we trialled the allocation of costs across all customers equally, but obviously this meant that some cost customers were getting allocated a lot higher costs than they should have given that their size and their involvement with the business, and some of our bigger customers were getting away with being charged very little. It was then decided to allocate the corporate sustaining cost across the total number of orders for each period instead. This made it a bit more dynamic and meant that the customers who had a greater involvement with the business received more of that cost to, re to reflect that. We decided it was the fairest allocation going forward and decided to stick with it. The next one's an interesting one um, for us. It was actually a something Pat heard about when talking with another um, person in our industry and we decided to introduce it in our business because we thought it was a good idea. It's called the bucket and well, we call it the bucket anyway and it's the difference between our system costs and the true landed cost of the product. It gives a buffer to protect against fluctuating currencies and shipping costs and it also actually saves a little bit of extra margin when negotiating um, that the sales team and the frontline guys don't see. So only we kind of split it up, the imports team know the true cost, but we have system cost which our frontline guys see. Our existing system was very antiquated and prone to error, and it gave Miguel and I quite a few headaches getting it right in the beginning. Um, FIS costs were recorded by a spreadsheet, which required a lot of manual work to get into ACORN. And the our requirement for quality of data led to a complete overhaul of this system. The IT team designed an application on our internet, which is now used by our imports department, to manage the products, the suppliers, and the live prices. It calculates a weighted average from the latest shipments and generates a weighted average bucket cost, which our equations deduct from our system cost to create a bucket revenue. I'll show you some reports on this a little bit later, how we introduce it into our system. So as you can see here, it detects the bucket cost, sorry, I've got a little typo here, um, and puts the bucket revenue into our system, and we treat that as an other income. So the products that don't have any bucket and those that do can still be compared accurately, but we can also see the savings our imports team are negotiating and our currency gains. The next one for us was the sales team cost, and that is still the trickiest for us to get it right and to get it accurate. At present, we're only using a temporary solution for the next few months, and we wanted to avoid using an arbitrary allocation to allocate these sales costs, like number of orders or sales volume, as we felt this would compromise the accuracy of the model and wouldn't do it justice for the rest of it. To better allocate the cost of our sales team, we wanted to use drivers to reflect the actual customer involvement with our sales team. We identified visits, emails, calls, quotes, and follow-up work. The difficulty for us came in extracting this data in an accurate way without impacting on our sales team's busy days. They're already busy enough and the thought of us monitoring them was not appealing for them. So the interim solution we used, um, we took a monthly call cycle from each account manager and we took the number of visits and it's also attached quotes, calls and follow-up work to that number of visits. I know that's not perfect in the meantime, but we wanted to get something that was better than using an arbitrary allocation, so this is what we decided to run with. In the meantime, currently our IT team is developing an application uh, to be used by our account managers when they go to visit a customer, where they can check in and check out the customer visits. The application keeps a total record of time spent, and we're also in the process of upgrading our CRM system 
to record calls, emails, and quotes and completely integrate that into the model. The next one for us was price support, where we have some suppliers who, against our really, we don't really like it so much, but they give us a price support rebate on products for specific customers. The rebates differ depending on the product and the customer, so from a TDA perspective, it was a little bit of a headache for us. Um, the challenge for us was, it's claimed at the end of the period uh, as a total, but to allocate this to an invoice level and a line item level, we needed a bit of extra work to make that happen. The solution, again, we turned to our IT team, and they built a reference database for us to record the price support for each customer's product and it was negotiated with suppliers. To do that, we had to create a unique identifier, the invoice line item level of the model, which combined the invoice ID and the product ID into one ID. And then the model looks up that invoice customer and matches the unique price support amount from the database. The price support's recorded as another income, again, for comparative purposes, and allows the profitability to be calculated at the product level for the first time for us. I've got some results from our model. This is the interesting stuff, I think, for you guys. Um, we'll start with a simple p and uh, It is a little bit different from our accounting p and because we shifted some things around, and things like the bucket, uh, the, the freight revenue, slightly different at the charge rates, and also the, sorry, the freight cost, and also the um, price support, again, um, for the first time was available to us. And this is all. This all gives gives us the ability to drill down. Our way, this is our whale curve, and obviously it's a bit hard to see some of the names, but those are all our customers along the bottom. Uh, it's it's only every fourth or fifth customer I think. There's obviously a lot more, but this was again for us to see that whale curve and realise that the potential within our business, if we could achieve the efficiencies we want, was really eye-opening for us. We can look at our customer profitability, our top 10 and bottom 10 customers. Um, it was pretty amazing for us to see some of these. We had some account managers who were really uh, proud of their accounts and some of them were not so good. And others that we thought might be a bit draining for us were actually really good performers. So it gave us a lot of uh, credibility with what we had initially as a gut feeling and attached it for a, a number of value to that. We can do a supplier analysis, now this is the buckets I was talking about before, where we can look at our suppliers and actually we can see the bucket amount savings that our imports team has negotiated or our finance team has made in currency gains. So for us this is really valuable information and it's not, it wasn't traditionally available to us like this and we can now see which of the suppliers are really benefiting us from that and the products we buy from them. We can also do some what-if analysis. Um, this is a really interesting one for us. These reports were all made in Excel uh, because this was just done at the um, end of two months ago. And um, he, we are also in the middle of building some reports in ClickView. But for this one, we calculated in Excel. We took the total sale, sorry, all our customers, ranked them by sales, and then we looked at their P&L profitability. The ones with a negative profitability, we decided if we can turn that into a 3% net profit margin, and then we can calculate the gain from that, when we totaled up for those top 23 accounts, the savings made, if we can turn those accounts from negative to a 3% margin, which is what we're aiming for, would be the equivalent to having a new account that would be one of our top five customers. So for us, that's huge. We don't have to go visit another customer. We don't have to sell any more products. We don't have to do anything else but turn this around the existing business that we've already got and make it efficient and make it work. <coughs> These are the reports we're currently building in ClickView, our BI tool, which is linked directly to the queue on the model. We've got a top 10, bottom 10 customers, similar to the one show, I showed you before. Um, but in this one, it's live updating because it's linked directly to the model. So this is what our management team will have access to all day, every day, live when they want it. They can also slice and dice and look at things and drill down to see exactly what they need to know. Here we've got the waterfall, the cost waterfall, which gives a visual representation, a breakdown of how the costs for an account work. Um, we've got all the costs along the bottom and obviously the uh, profit along the, uh, the y-axis there. 
and it just visualized uh, for someone maybe it says one which we call the customer performance matrix total profit on the y-axis and sales on the x-axis so you've got a, a line a performance line across as the trend line so you, it's a really nice way for us to visualize how a customer fits not in all the different dimensions of profitability and whether or not they could still have good sales but do they compare in terms of the ratio of profitability to other accounts that we have. Another one we've got here is a three dimensional <coughs> graph where we have the profit and the sales but also the, the bubble here represents the number of orders so it's an interesting way for us to compare how the number of orders affects profitability and obviously when we look at the numbers we want to be able to take that and be, see what happens if we can reduce those orders, how it affects our profitability. Now for us, the interesting part's just beginning. We have all this information available to us and it's now up to us to act on it and get the results that we want. For customers, there are three ways we plan to go about this. Direct meetings with underperforming customers. Now this is going to be the tricky one for us, I think, because we're dealing with people who might not be so happy to hear from us, but we're working on strategies to implement this. Some of our accounts have shown to be in a significantly undesirable position, and we'll have to work to resolve that. This will involve sharing some of the key facts which contribute to their unprofitability and steps we can take to resolve these issues. Now for us, an industry standard net margin for businesses in the packaging and distribution business sits at around 3%. We believe this is to be a fair request of business, and if we cannot make this net margin, it's not worth us doing business. We plan to pose the question to our customers, if this was us, would you do business with us like this? We're then going to take indirect action for underperforming customers. This will include both incentives for good behaviour, as well as rules which change how we engage with our customers. An example of an incentive might be a giveaway or an offer of freight free for orders above, say, $1,000. Our rule might be as simple as a strict minimum order policy. The last one for customers is setting up customers as good business from the get-go. We believe this is going to be a lot easier than turning underperforming customers around because we want to start the way we mean to continue. And we're also working on a pricing tool which, based on the cost structure of the model, our sales team will be able to input a few key variables, like the cost drivers, and the model will be able to tell them at what price our products are needed need to be set at to achieve the margin that we want. Underperforming products will also be shortlisted and investigated by our procurement team. Reasons for a bad product can vary a little bit more than a customer, could come down to a customer's bad behaviour or a problem with our pricing. So the reasons must be identified and looked at case by case. The internal efficiencies, again, will also have to be looked at case by case. A comparison between full costing and absorption costing is available to us with the tool that we're using. And it shows the difference between when in the cost allocation if our efficiencies were eliminated. This, the processes with standout differences will be, have to be examined and rectified case by case as well. The ga the, this game plan will not change our business overnight and is definitely going to involve a bit of trial and error. We plan to start small with the less significant customers. So any mistakes we make in the initial process, it's not the end of the world if something bad happens. To summarise, our profitability project has been by far the most important project Snell has undertaken in recent times by a significant margin. The knowledge gained from such a project carries huge power and the implications throughout the whole company are huge as well, from high level strategy down to simple process management. The ability for our managers to have instant access to the profitability of each customer, product, supplier, branch, and salesman, as well as the cost attached to the process, is game changing. From knowing which customers to treasure and which need transforming, to identifying internal inefficiencies and processes, this project is just beginning to offer us the information that we've been yearning for for so long. It's not been an easy task, though. I'm not going to lie to you and say it was a walk in the park to do this. Our process involved a top-to-bottom analysis of the business, and I cannot emphasize enough the importance of quality of data and its availability. We thought we were strong in these areas at the beginning of the project, but in hindsight, we definitely could have been better. A weakness in data quality or a delay in the availability can cause a delay in the whole project, which costs time and money. There are also, of course, sensitivity issues too. The information resulting from a TDABC project like this, if handed to a competitor, could cause huge damage to us. 
That's why we've been very careful with controlling access and we're still in the process of, of, of formulating a plan which governs access rights in a way that maximises the full potential and lets our guys run with this information, but also mitigates risk. In case you're wondering, some of these numbers have been changed. <laughs> these caveats aside, I believe that as a company we're embarking on a big strategic shift from a growth-focused company to a profit-focused company. In days gone by, we've hungrily gone after any business we can get our hands on, sometimes bending over backwards and dropping our pants to make a sale. Now we have backbone in negotiations. We can quantify what's good business and what's bad business and engage in relationships which advance Snell as a company rather than stifle our resources. We're utilising technology to assist us with the strategic shift. Our new website is presently being phased into our customer base at the moment. And we realise, as we realise the importance, enormous importance and cost behind our sales team, it makes huge sense to us to focus their efforts on customers which will bring value to the business and shift them from being just an order taker to someone who brings value to our customers at the highest level. The new website and online ordering system facilitates this by changing for our smaller customers the way that they do business but not compromising on the service that they get. We want to be a one-stop shop providing a wealth of information to make online ordering easy. And of course, if there's any issues, they can speak to a customer service representative. But this change in strategy illustrates a conscious shift of resources to where they'll benefit the organisation the most, quantified and backed up by the concrete results of the TD agency model. To close the implementation of this model will feel like a huge relief to both me and Miguel, of course. But the reality is that Snell has just got to the starting line of our profitability project. Both the model and this new game plan for us will require and deserve constant improvement. We'll explore strategies to transform the, un the unprofitable parts of the business, both through addressing internal inefficiencies and influencing undesirable external behaviour as well. <coughs> no doubt there's going to be a little trial and error for us, and we are going to start small, but the prospect of what's possible is really exciting for us. I really believe we're going to look back in years gone by and wonder how we ever fumbled through the dark without this information. One last thing before I close up. I wanted to talk about our relationship with Miguel and cost and profitability. Before embarking on this project, we had never met Miguel. We had no references from anyone uh, until we got in touch with him. Uh, but after contacting him and hearing about the Acorn Systems product, the methodology and his case studies, we decided he was our guy to pursue the project with. Miguel and his family came us about as far away from Portugal as you can get to New Zealand to work with a bunch of Kiwis who we've never met and only talked to online. Looking back, we both took a bit of a chance with this project, but I can say now with certainty that it was the right decision. Miguel's a pretty smooth operator, and he knows the methodology and products very well. He's also genuinely passionate about the subject, as you can see from this conference today. He made every effort to get the job done to the highest standards, and I think without him, I could have become the next Jimmy. And for that, I'm very grateful. <laughs> I'm certain that this is only the beginning of our profitability journey with Miguel and Costum Profitability, but they have armed us with the knowledge to be successful. I look forward to working with them in the future as we strive to achieve these goals. Thank you very much.